Hey YouTube, Gecko Guy here. So here I am with another, um, I guess you could say project build. Um, this is really not a how to install video. This is just me um, installing the RC four wheel drive snow plow wooden, uh, with the Axial SCX 10 mount to my SCX 10 obviously. Um, and for a ser servo, I went with something really cheap. Uh, this servo was like 12 bucks. Um, Power HD 1501 servo. Um, really, really super cheap. All I did in this video was just dry fit it to make sure everything worked. Um, I don't think I installed everything right. Um, now here I am just kind of dry mounting it, dry fitting it. And gonna decide on what I should change or what I should uh, really um, switch out as far as like you know uh, tight uh, the the titanium screws uh, stainless steel screws I should say because um, I can guarantee with these being out in the snow these are gonna rust really quick unless you dry them off super super fast and put like a protectant on there which Gecko Guy is very lazy when it comes to uh, um, maintenance. Now, <clears throat> I am, I have a couple of little build videos on my SCX-10 um, that I, I don't know at the time of this video if I uploaded them or not, so I'm going to have to backtrack on that one. Um, but here I am, I'm just using a, my cheap... Uh, like under ten dollar hex drivers um, from China here, just hand twerking it, um, twerking, not twerking, um, just to kind of fit it in. I'm just like, okay, well, that's not gonna work that way now. Um, so what I wound up doing was, you have to remove the five screws for the plow in order to mount that servo. Um, unless you do it the opposite way and just mount it um, from from the back, put the screw in from the back side. And I used longer screw hardware. Don't ask me the exact length or like, uh, I don't know the exact length of that screw, but all I know is that I used basically a two millimeter driver the whole way around, um, minus the um, the body, the suspension. Um, I had to lower that on my aluminum lift kit. Um, I lowered it to the third mounting hole. And yeah, um, now as far as other uh, electronics I'm considering, I'm considering a new steering servo and I have to get those steering links right. It's just not right with the 2.2 links. Ever since I bought that, just such a weird angle. It's like, they don't sit um, at an angle that I like. They're kind of um, bowed outwards um, towards the right on each side. Um, so it doesn't look like it's a straight line. It looks like it's off to the side a bit. So I have to get that figured out. I'm pretty sure it's a steering link. Uh, I think it's probably too short or something. Um, now, as far as a servo, I'd probably go with uh, Savox waterproof or something, just just as something, because I've had this high tech one for a while with an aluminum uh, screw, uh, or not aluminum screw, but aluminum uh, um, mount, and it's been doing all right. Um, I think I pretty much stripped out that stock uh, high tech screw, but I'm just looking for something. A little different, a little better. Um, I don't really like voiding my warranty right away. So this winter I could probably get away with um, like a new Savox servo. And the beauty of these Axial Jeeps is it's always a changing process. Now here I am just kind of showing um, my shocks here and I have to lower that. And I did rip off the, um, the LiPo sticker on that. That's a GeForce 5000 Ma. Um, two cell lipo 20 C and here we are showing the front and I did have a little problem with that um, and here's that and here's the mount for that 
um, finished up, dry, dry fitted. Um, now I have some. Uh, it's very questionable. You see that little chain link there? That thing is like paper thin. I kid you not. Um, those links seem very cheap, and I'm probably gonna look at, um, like making my own custom little links there, my own little uh, chain links. Um, because in order for me to dry mount that like that, um, what I had to do was kind of take uh, the pliers, the orange pliers there, and bend it a little bit just so I could get the screw around the, uh, uh, the servo horn, or the screw that goes onto a servo horn. Now, um, what I showed you in the front there, I had to actually drill um, the mounting hole um, for the bracket. Um, now you see on the far left corner here on this shot, um, you'll see the two silver, um, silver-ish stainless steel screws, um, as well as that mounting bracket for the, um, for the plow. And I don't know if it was from something when I first bought my SCX-10 or if it's just, I don't know. But I had to basically drill out bigger holes for those, uh, those uh, far left on, on the screen, the farther left one, as well as the um, opposite side screw. Um, I had to drill that out a bit just so I could thread it easier. I don't know why it was such a small hole. <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Uh, and then that little bracket that you may be able to see in the left, um, I had to remove that. Um, now, that's the, um, the mount for your battery, your lipos. Um, I had to take that out and dremel it a bit because there's like a little bit of a um, excess flange that was not allowing me to get the um, aluminum uh, little mounting brackets in there right. Um, it was causing an improper mesh. So here's that part. And then what I was doing was uh, just taking those D-shaped links um, and screwing them in. So I know this is kind of out of frame here, and I apologize about that. Um, and then I just screwed something um, under, don't know the exact length, but I dry fitted it and it works just fine. So that's all I really care about. Um, now I did drive it around. Um, I did drive it around the living room just to show my parents that it works. And um, yeah. Now, as far as my transmitter, I'm using a Spectrum DX4S. It was like the original model, not the uh, newer one with the, um, the, 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 the AVS or whatever the heck it's called. Um, basically, gyro stabilized driving. I didn't have that um, technology in my current Spectrum DX4S. But um, anyway, I used the... Um, auxiliary port and the auxiliary port has a up neutral and lower um, um, sort of a deal there and um, all you really need on this uh, plow here is the up and down you don't really need the neutral point you need just up and really just neutral um, so yeah so it'll be really handy if I decide to get myself a Viterra Twin Hammers later. Which I probably will. I'd probably go with the kit, to be honest. It's cheaper that way. Um, now, I didn't waterproof this servo. Again, this is just for dry fitting. and um, Yeah, uh, it was just for dry fitting. So I didn't really plan on waterproofing it just yet. Um, and I hate making these kinds of videos because I can never figure it out myself and put it in a professional sort of manner for you guys. This is kind of just real time um, with me just screwing around trying to f uh, install this dang thing because I had to do a couple of uh, Dremels. I had to do a couple of uh, 
uh, custom like screws. Well, not screws, but like I had to drill my actual chassis um, and widen out the holes. Now I don't know if you need to do that in a stock RTR kit, um, but it's something that you should look into. And then again, this is aftermarket. A lot of this is aftermarket, so I can't really fault them there. I will do a separate. Um, I will do a separate review on the snowplow and I'll probably do a long-term wrap-up of how it does with light dusting, heavy um, heavy snow and that sort of stuff um, because I'm sure everybody is dying to see this SCX-10 plow some snow and, and let me tell you, uh, so am I. Um, today is November 16th. We had snow yesterday on the 15th. We got a good uh, three or four inches of snow, but a lot of it melted. But it was still pretty, such a light dusting that um, it would have just easily been plowed by this SCX-10. I probably could have done like my whole, the whole length of the driveway in like one pass. Um, so yeah, I, I'm probably going to look into larger capacity lipos, uh, but these 5,000 ma are doing just fine. I might even just do a, a parallel uh, connector of both my batteries just to get some weight down on there, um, just so it can plow a little more, because the more weight you have on this, it's probably gonna um, plow it a lot easier. Um, now I might look into making some snow chain tires and my iPhone it was just there as a reference guide in case I needed to look up pictures on how to mount this. Again, I didn't really go with the directions because there aren't any. And when I unboxed this, I kind of just chucked it uh, aside and kind of just called it a day and said, eh, it's not winter yet, so I don't really need to get it um, prepared. But the grind is on to get it all prepared and all waterproofed up and um, necessary waterproofing and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to look into, um, you know, like waterproofing that and getting these screws, um, all Loctite down. I don't know if that's a word or not, but it is now. Um, and now the overall design and feel of it, it just feels great. Um, now, if they had like detailed instructions, that would be nice. Now, I'm sure they probably do, but uh, this whole installation took me about a good hour and a half ish. Then again, I had to do like custom uh, custom mounts and custom drilling, as well as there was an epic Packer game on. I am from Wisconsin, so I am a big Packer fan, and we completely stomped the Eagles. <laughs> That was a pretty epic game. We were like 50-something to like 14. I don't know. I don't really watch a lot of football. I'm mostly just editing and sitting on YouTube. So, um, you know, if you have any suggestions on what kind of upgrades I should get, uh, please let me know. I'm, I myself am thinking about switching those stock shocks out for something different. Um, not that they're, the stock shocks are a problem, it's just upgrades because why not? Um, and I want something that looks a little more sleek, um, not really, I know it looks pretty scale with having shocks, actual spring shocks on there, but, eh, I don't know. Internal shock, uh, springs would be alright. Um, now let's see. Um, as far as the DX4S, yeah, like I said, it was an auxiliary port, and um, say what you want about Hobby King and Spectrum receivers, but I don't want to spend $60 every time I get a new RC on a receiver if I want to link it up to my uh, Spectrum. Those orange RX receivers from Hobby King are like uh, 11 or $12, and they're just so dirt cheap. Um, you can get like six of those things for the price of one Spectrum receiver. So you can get like six RCs that you can put these in for the price of one Spectrum uh, uh, receiver. 
Now, um, they're great for overall bashing use. I don't know how well they would do in racing. And um, with me, I've got kind of poor eyesight, so um, it doesn't really matter to me. I farthest I can see an RC out is like a good couple hundred feet. And even that much, I don't really have my RC more than 30 feet away from me. And this rule applies for pretty much any RC um, of mine. So, yeah. Um, now here I am with tools. I used a... I don't know why. When did I use the... Oh yeah, the Phillips head screw was for the servo. Um, and my little power hand drill there for that I got for 10 bucks. I didn't really need that. Um, but it's there if I wanted to use it for quarter inch um, hex bits. That little black one that you see there is not um, quarter inch, so disregard that. Um, and that pocket knife there is, um, uh, my dad gave that to me, and um, it's always something that I'm going to be treasuring. So, yeah. Um, I used that knife to try to, like, cut the uh, battery holder, um, the tabs off a little bit. Here we are, the steering, and we got throttle, and let's see. Um, yep, there we go. First little test mount of that, and I found that it wasn't sitting flush, so I had to play with my suspension because um, I, I had to play with my suspension a little bit because it wasn't sitting flush, so I had to lower it. Um, I thought it was a steering, um, um, I, I thought it was a steering horn issue, like it wasn't compressing down far enough uh, to push it down, but then I'm like, that's supposed to be how it's sitting. So, uh, here I am showing you um, that the D part there on the on the wheel um, it controls up and down. See there, um, they recommend you have it at uh, according to the picture like all the way down. See there we go up and down, up and down, um, and that's really all you have with uh, um, this um, plow here. All you have is up and down motion. Uh, you don't have sideways tilts. Uh, of course, you could probably custom mount that in. I have seen other YouTubers do that before, um, and I'd probably have to have a, a, like a, my fly sky to do that with, um, or just get another additional auxiliary. Um, I use an, an additional auxiliary port. Now my receiver as well isn't waterproof. Um, I'm probably going to do a separate quick video on how I waterproof it. Um, there's several, several, several um, videos out there on how people waterproof their electronics. Uh, I'm just going to do a sip, simple, quick, and easy one. I like to use silicone. Um, a lot of people use Plasti Dip, but um, it's just a matter of preference. You know, what do you like? I, I like clear silicone, um, although it's not black. I can just rip it clean off, um, and it's less of a mess, less of a hassle, and... I don't have to uh, let it sit there and um, drip off. So, uh, and again, that was a that's what he said joke. So, <laughs> got to keep those in there sometimes for you guys to watch. We're all immature at sometimes. Okay. Um, now, <clears throat> with future questions like this. Um, I do, I do, that. I'm sorry guys, I'm really not able to talk right now, I had like a nine hour shift at work, and I've, I'm still, I'm still going here at uh, 11 p.m., and I've got the mush mouth going, <laughs> so it's hard for me to talk, um, uh, but, um, if you have a question right away, are you able to turn, um, turn the steering wheel, um, and move the plow up and down um, separately and they don't interfere with one another. So yes, the answer is yes. I can turn the wheel left or right, have the plow up or down, as well as throttle um, and have the plow up and down, um, which I will show in the, um, in the 
end or in the beginning, wherever I decide to put it. All right, guys, so I think I'll end it there. Be sure to comment, like, and subscribe as always. And like I said, I, I'm really, I really don't like doing these upgrade videos. I never have anything prepared as far as what I'm saying or how I'm gonna, um, how I'm gonna do it. And it, it's hard for me just to figure it out on my own, let alone try to tell you guys how to do it in an easy way. This is just kind of a voiceover with me just kind of doing it and talking about what I found was wrong. And like I said in the early beginning, this is not really a how-to video. This is just me kind of doing a voiceover. So uh, thanks for watching, guys, and come back again, and I will be sure to put the plow to the snow.